Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. Also, if you are on Facebook, make sure you check out our community group. Just look for a daily Bible podcast under groups. And did you know, Michelle, did you know that ratings and reviews can make a huge difference in helping a podcast grow? They can. (laughs) They can. So if you have a minute, like 60 seconds, just go and leave a rating. If you have a minute and a half, you could leave a review too. Mm -hmm. Um, It just helps us to reach more listeners when they see those ratings and reviews. I mean, just think of those ratings as like a high five or a pat in the back saying, hey, great job. And it's uh, just as Trisha said, it's super easy. It takes a minute, whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify or any other platform, your feedback is like gold to us. Yeah. And we like reading them. I mean, we we like reading the reviews, the comments and even suggestions, stories. So. Um, yeah, take a moment to rate us a review and then we'll just keep keep sharing what we're learning about the Bible, which and we love. We're, we're sharing, we're, you yeah. need to share too. Just hit that share button in your podcast app and send it to a friend. Send this podcast to a friend because we're in Job today and it's some really good, good, good it stuff. Is. So today we are reading Job 15, 16, 17, and 18. All right. So back in Job, when we approach the book of Job, we believe there is one kind of overarching question. Why did God, who allows all things, allow Job, a blameless man, to experience so many tragedies and go through immense suffering? I think that's the question Mm -hmm. that everybody kind of asks when they come to Job. Mm -hmm. Like, why did God allow this? But if we go back to the beginning of the book, we see a different question in the heavenly realms. Would a man who lives righteously and honor God, if he experienced loss and suffering, what would he do with that? How Mm. would he respond? And God believed that Job would continue to live righteously. He pointed him out to Satan, like, look at my, look at my friend Job. And Satan's like, oh, he's going to curse you. God's like, no. And God allowed Satan, which like, we don't, I mean, that's a hard thing, but God knew that Job would continue. So if God took away Job's blessings, Satan said, Job's going to curse you, but God disagreed. And everything that Job had, God allowed Satan to have it under his power. And just, I just remind you of that. Like God Mm. knew that Job would prove himself faithful, which kind of just blows my mind. (laughs) God would, would say, okay, go ahead and do this because he knew that Job would prove himself faithful. So as we start Job 15, we start with Job's friend Eliphaz giving the second response to Job and his words are harsher than the first time. And Eliphaz accuses Job of not fearing God or having reverence for him. He claims that Job's sins are telling Job what to say. Your words are based on clever deception. Then Eliphaz tells Job to listen to him. Eliphaz says that he has the answers that Job needs from Eliphaz's own experience. Basically, this advice is that the wicked won't prosper and they will lose all their wealth. And as I read this, I it took us a, a, another stab at Job because Eliphaz clearly believes that Job lost everything because mm-hmm. of a hidden sin. So he's like, like when he's down, he's basically kicking Job while he's down. And Job's response is what I'm thinking. What miserable comforters you are. I mean, mm-hmm. they came to comfort him after he lost all his children, all his wealth. He's covered with boils and you know, lost his health. Um, so if their words were supposed to make Job feel better, no thanks. Job briefly responds to Eliphaz, saying if the roles were reversed, Job would try to give comfort instead of criticism. And then Job turns his speech to God. His pain is poured out here, and Job explains how God hurt him, broke him, and set him up as a target, and Job still claims his innocence. And one glimpse of hope in chapter 16 is verse 19 Even now, my witness is in heaven. My advocate is there on high. So Job, again, desires a mediator between him and God. In chapter 17, Job continues to defend his innocence. And remember, he's lost everything. My days are over. My hopes have disappeared. My heart's desires are broken. And 
In 18, Bilidad responds to Job for a second time, and he's reminding Job that the wicked will be wiped out, again, assuming that Job is wicked. And I think one of the most challenging things is understanding Job. So for years, I had no idea, again, that it was poetry. Mm -hmm. And when it's translated, we often miss some of the rhythmic effects, the wordplay, and even the sound play, things like alliteration, which means that multiple words of a sentence begin with the same letter. And again, I used to read this as a book of history, just like we were reading through Genesis, and it is, but it's also written in poetic form. And so there's a lot of rhyme and rhythm amplifications, themes, if you're like, Again, this is over the top. Like this, these dialogues just keep going on. It's almost like the Broadway production of Hamilton, which is, you know, telling mm. history in a different kind of beats and songs mm-hmm. and stuff. The, put this way, the book of Job is different because it is poetry. And it would, another thing that's interesting, it would have been considered an ancient book even when Moses was writing Um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, this is something that they would have had and known as poetry at that time. Mm. That's, yeah, that's, it's beautiful. And I'm so glad that you brought it back around to the fact that it's poetry, because I know that as I've been reading Job this time, I've been trying to think of it as it is poetry. I wanted to talk about Job's response to Eliphaz. And he says in chapter 16, verse 9, that God hates me and angrily tears me apart. He snaps his teeth at me and pierces me with his eyes. I mean, it 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 almost sounds like a temper tantrum. Um, it it just it just almost sounds like a temper temper tantrum there. Um, and and it seems to be the opposite of what he said at the beginning. The Lord gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. Like Job felt he was in supreme conflict, not with his friends, not with his circumstances, but with his God. Mm-hmm. And he's admitting it. He's more than admitting it. And or at least his he he finds himself at conflict with his prior conception of God and how God worked worked things. And his crisis threw all that prior conception into uncertainty. And now he felt like he's under attack from God. So some commentators, such as Adam Clark, believe that the he of Job 16.9 is Satan and not God. And um, G. Campbell Morgan wondered if Job had seen some faint outline of a shadow of the foe having some perception of the work of Satan described in the first two chapters, which I thought was fascinating because it helped at least in my mind, again, we don't know from the text if that's what Mm -hmm. it is, but there are some commentaries, there's some theologians who have said this. It's like, oh, but according to David Guzak at EnduringWord.com, he says, it seems that Job here is wrestling with God just as intensely as Mm -hmm. Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord in Genesis 32. The similarity of the struggle is instructive Given the difference in their character, Jacob wrestled with God as a carnal man who needed to be conquered. Job struggled with God as a godly man who was also needing to be conquered, or at least more conquered. That's really good. And I really think, like, I think it's okay if Job is struggling with God. If he's like, yeah, he, yeah. he and God puts him in his place at the end. Like God loves him, but lovingly also puts him in his place as we get to the near the book. And it's heavy chapters, but I think it's okay because we're going to struggle with God. We're going to have questions. We're going to have like maybe the initial response like Job's was, was like, everything I have is from you. You like the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But also then the next day we're like, why did this happen? Like this is such human nature. And the fact that it's in there, it gives me hope. And it gives me like, okay, God knows human nature. So these are heavy chapters. They hurt. I hurt for Job. but And I understand his friends are trying to make sense of it. But Job is innocent. And, you know, maybe they're worried that if if he is innocent and horrible things happen to him, maybe they could be next. Mm. 
That is a good point. That's that's a really good point. Um, you know, my mind went to Isaiah because I first felt like some of the symbolism here pointed to Jesus. And we know that in Isaiah, he prophesies about the coming king. And in looking through the book, I found this verse where Isaiah is talking about the judgment on Israel. And he says, for you have forgotten the God of your salvation and you have failed to remember the rock of your strength. And please know, I'm totally lifting this verse right out of context of what the bigger meaning is and the exile of Israel and all of that. But as I read this, it struck me that Job has not forgotten God. Mm -hmm. Like he is hurting. He is really hurting. And he may be blaming God, but he's wrestling through that. He's wrestling through that. And, and sometimes there is those pains, those deep, deep pains that you mm-hmm. can't just put a bandaid on it and say, oh, in a, in a week, it's going to heal all, it's going to heal over. Like Job is wrestling through these things and he needs to wrestle. Yeah, like yeah. he needs to see God in a different light. And even though we'd be like, well, he had his theology pretty down, you know, down pretty good, but God knows he needs to see him in a different light. And, um, and so Job, again, he's, he's informing our suffering, but he's also informing our wrestling with God and, and just how we go about doing that and that it's okay. I think that's where, um, sometimes we as Christians, we don't, we say it's not okay. And, or it's not okay if it lasts for more than a day or two. Whereas Job is like, it's okay. I need to, I need to sit here and wrestle. And, um, and God is still there. He has not forgotten God. Uh, so it reminds me of, we just had um, our two grandkids staying with us for three weeks while they were visiting from Europe, but two-year-old and a five-year-old. And multiple times they'd have a tantrum. And hmm. I'm a big enough person. No, Nana, no. I'm not going to like, oh, you should not do that little boy because you're only two you know, I'm a, I'm a person I can handle when a two-year-old's mad at me because I won't let him climb on the top of something that I know is dangerous I'm okay with that like I'm not gonna take it against him he's two he's still learning he doesn't fully trust me yet you know all the things trust that I have his well-being in mind God is big enough that he can handle it when we're like yeah. no God this is not fair I'm mad at you, whatever. That's really like, good. He is big enough. He could handle it. Just like I'm not going to get upset if a five-year-old or a two-year-old is mad at me for a moment or is asking me questions or is pouting or is saying, no, no. I mean, I'm fine. It's I know I love them. It's for their greater good. I'm teaching them. I'm going to be there to comfort them when they're mad at me. You know, it's just like, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, well, we need to take a break and um, hear from our sponsor. But when we come back, we'll have the word of the day. Stay tuned. Okay, the word of the day is accuse. Mm. So to accuse is to charge someone with an offense or a crime or Mm -hmm. claim that someone has done something wrong. And so The book of Job is part of wisdom literature, and the goal is to investigate the nature of suffering. And Job's suffering increases because of the accusations of his friends. Like, his suffering is even compounded when they show up to comfort him. Um, But also in his pain, Job starts accusing God. Did God hate Job as Job Job claimed? No, God didn't hate him. Um, We know that God didn't hate Job because it's laid out in the beginning of the book. He considered Job blameless. He even pointed out to Satan, like I mentioned before, consider my servant Job. Yet still Job's friends accuse him. So false accusations are never fun. Yet isn't Job doing the same thing? He is accusing God of ill will. But this is a good reminder. Like it's easy for us to accuse God of harm, especially when we're hurt. Like we mentioned before, God can handle it. But also let's think through these accusations. So a few years ago, a friend accused me of something that I wrote that was very similar to a topic of one of her books. And thankfully she was not as harsh like Job's friends, but she was actually very kind when she approached me. Uh, But her accusations that I took some of her book, it crushed me because I knew that it came from my own life. Mm -hmm. I knew the words I had written came from my experiences. Yes, there was a similar topic, but a lot of us write about similar topics. Um, And because she was a friend, I felt like so hurt by it. 
it hurt me for months. The pain, I'm just like, I can't believe she gives me of that. Um, but it didn't end our relationship, even though I was hurt. I actually um, had a one of our pastors was part of Peacemaker Ministries. He's a mediator, and we had a mediator help us talk about it, help us her explain her side of it, me explain my side of it. Um, and we were able to put it behind us. We were like, now I talk to this friend almost daily. We, she, I understood her point of view. She understood my point of view. We got through it. And I love that we can have these conversations. We had a mediator and we're, we moved past it. I don't, don't ever think about it again. It just, I happen to think of it for the illustration, but when I talk to her every day, it's, this is not something, a lingering hurt. What did Job want? He wanted a mediator a, to go against the friend's accusations. Um, and as Christians, we have the mediator Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, but also know that, you know, God, even though he was, again, accusing God, God continued the conversation. He continued drawing Job closer to him. God did not give up in Job. He mm-hmm. stayed in that relationship. I think that's important. That is important. And I love the fact that you brought up the mediator. And I mean, just as a part of the word of the day being accused, you brought up the mediator and, you know, a mediator is concerned with both parties. And Job said, I need someone to mediate between God and me. We continue seeing foreshadowing of Christ. Mm -hmm. We saw this a couple of times yesterday and again today in our reading. And in my notes, I wrote Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And today, Today, I have the hope and knowledge that Jesus is our mediator. We yeah. all do. And we know that the Old Testament is God setting up pieces, the players, the history, the everything. He is preparing things for the mediator to come. He's, cre- he's creating that urge, that longing for the mediator to come. And God's preparing for an innocent child to be born, someone to walk the earth and be without sin, someone to die on the cross for our sins. We know Christ is the perfect mediator. He intercedes on our behalf. He intercedes when we are being accused. We do not have someone in our court when we stand before. We have someone in our court when we stand before God. That is such mm-hmm. good news. And he will gladly stand stand against any accuser. It hurts to be falsely accused. It hurts deeply especially when you know it isn't true at all. Yeah. And I think when you have personal conflict, um, I highly recommend Peacemaker Ministries. Mm -hmm. They do have people you can contact or you go online, you can find a peacemaker to help you. And they know how to, like Michelle says, they're for both sides of, they're for both sides. They want to help both sides. They want to come to a a peaceful agreement. Um, But also I love what Michelle said too about, we have a mediator in Christ. And since the fall of Adam and Eve, sinners could not approach God. We cannot approach God, but because of Jesus, we can. And as a mediator, Jesus took our punishment so that we can accept God's grace. So not only did he like stand between and help people work it out, he became the way that we can, we can come to God. We can be reconciled with God. Um, Second Corinthians 5, 21 says, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And so while my pastor helped mediate a dispute, Jesus took our guilt so that we can have eternity with God. And that's a whole different level of mediation. Mm -hmm. It's something that Job longed for, and it's something that we can be thankful for. So, I mean, as we're thinking about what we read today, think about the insights you have gained when it comes to suffering. Mm -hmm. And also think about what can change or understanding how if Christ is our mediator, how does that impact our personal trials? And I would love to hear your thoughts on that. If you are in our Facebook group, leave a comment. If you Mm -hmm. leave a comment on our social media, I would just love to hear as you're reading through Job, what are your thoughts on suffering? Are they different than before? And your thoughts Mm -hmm. on Christ as our mediator? Those are some good questions. Yes, please drop them in the comments on our Facebook group. Oh, today's been good. I've learned. I've learned a lot. Mm-hmm. Trisha, can you can you pray for us and close this out? Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, um, there is a lot of accusations. <laughs> there is uh, 
just in everyday life with people around us, there might be accusations. There are our own accusations. Maybe even now we're having those feelings of God, how can you, how did you allow this to happen to me? Why did you allow this to happen? Maybe um, we're not voicing them. Maybe just they're in our hearts are feeling like I've just been trying to be faithful. God, how could all these hard things happen? Lord, um, accusations are a hard thing, but I am so thankful, Lord, that first of all, that you can handle it. And second of all, that we have Jesus who is our mediator that helps us to understand that, um, even when there is sin and hardship and suffering in this world, that because of our mediator, Jesus, that we do not have to live in that forever, that through Jesus, um, we can come, we can approach you. We can have forgiveness. We can have a new life and that new life is in you, Lord. I pray that you will help us to fully embrace the gift Mm. that you have given us. And because of your son, I pray that we can have hard conversations Mm. knowing that in the end, if we're going to trust you and love you, even after the hardships, Lord, help us not to uh, put up a wall between us, but to trust in Christ Mm. to be our mediator. Help me to trust you more today. Mm. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the Word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow we are reading Job 19, Job 20, and Job 21. And I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us in the Daily Bible Podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you're going to find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts on their network. They have got shows on Bible study, on parenting, on prayer, and so much more. That's lifeaudio.com. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.